Hello and welcome. You're logged on to IndianTimesDaily.com, the only portal for news from India, America, Canada, Punjab, and Gujarat in English, Punjabi, and Gujarati, with a list of well-established businesses and resources that you may need. I am Sangram Singh Rathore, and today's headlines are: In India, 15 Naxals have been killed in an encounter with security forces, and Indra Nui is set to step down as PepsiCo CEO. In America. Five people have been killed in Chicago shootings and President Trump has admitted that his son met with a Russian lawyer in 2016. In Punjab, the ISI is reportedly funding the Sikh referendum 2020 campaign and another MLA has joined the rebel group of Ahmad Party legislators. Stay tuned to IndianTimesDaily.com and I'll be back with all the news that's important for you from India, America and Punjab. Welcome back to Indian Times Daily. The top 10 headlines from India are at least 15 Maoists have been killed in an encounter with security forces in a dense forest in Chhattisgarh, Sukhma district. This was one of the biggest anti-Naxal operations in the history of Chhattisgarh. Two Naxals, including a woman who was injured in the gun battle, were also arrested. Indra Nui, PepsiCo's Indian origin CEO, will step down after 12 years leading the US food and beverage giant. President Raymond Laguerta was elected by the board of directors to succeed her. Leguata was also elected to the board. Chennai's Kaveri Hospital has said that there was a decline in DMK chief Karuna Nidhi's health. The 94-year-old Karuna Nidhi, who was being treated for fever due to a urinary tract infection, was admitted to the hospital after his blood pressure dropped. The Lok Sabha has passed the Scheduled Castes and Scheduled Tribes Prevention of Atrocities Amendment Bill 2018. It is aimed at nullifying the Supreme Court judgment pronounced in March. The judgment had diluted the SCST Act as the immediate arrest of an accused under this law will no longer be mandatory. The Supreme Court has adjourned hearing on petition challenging the validity of Article 35A of Constitution. This gives permanent residents of Jammu and Kashmir certain privileges and denies settlement rights to other Indian citizens. Billionaire Diamond Chair Mehul Choksi can be extradited from Antigua under the Commonwealth law. The Antiguan authorities are of the view that Section 7 of its Extradition Act 1993 provides scope for acting on India's request to send back the fugitive jeweler. The Jammu police has arrested militant Irfan Wani of Pulwana district from a bus when he was on his way to New Delhi. Seven to eight hand grenades have also been recovered from him. With this, the police have foiled a possible terror attack in the national capital. Former India captain Sunil Gavaskar has criticised the way India prepared for the opening test against England. He said that the lack of serious practice ahead of the Birmingham test has hurt India as the batsman's poor technique against moving deliveries was thoroughly exposed. India notched up one of its most memorable football triumphs when the country's under-20 team stunned traditional giants Argentina 2-1. This is despite being reduced to 10 men in a pulsating contest at the COTIF Cup in Spain. Actress Kajol, who is gearing up for the release of her forthcoming film, Helicopter Ela, says she does not believe in women-oriented films, but believes in good films and scripts. Actresses like Vidya Balan and Rani Mukherjee have turned their focus on women-oriented films by doing projects like Tumhari Sulu, Hitchki and Mardani. Stay tuned to Indian Times Daily as the news from America and Punjab follows. Welcome back to Indian Times Daily. The top 10 headlines from America are Five people were killed and 44 people were shot across the Midwest in US city of Chicago in a wave of violence. Some of the shootings were targeted and related to gang conflicts. Gunmen targeted groups including one gathering of people who had attended a funeral repast. US President Donald Trump has admitted that his son met with the Russian lawyer in Trump Tower in 2016 to get information on an opponent which he defended it as totally legal. The meeting has come under intense scrutiny from Special Counsel Robert Mueller. Former First Lady Michelle Obama is making a 53rd anniversary of the Voting Rights Act by urging Americans to participate in a week of action to get people signed up to vote. Obama announced that the When We All Vote Week of Action will be held from September 22nd to 29th. US Senator Rand Paul met with Russian lawmakers in Moscow and had invited them to the visit the US. Paul said that American and Russian lawmakers need closer contact noting that the biggest problem right now is the absence of dialogue. President Donald Trump's administration has reimposed the first batch of Iran sanctions since Washington withdrew from the 2015 nuclear deal. The more significant tranche of sanctions, including on oil sales, won't, however, come into force until November. 
A team of researchers led by Indian American Vikas Berry have developed a new process for growing graphene directly on materials used for nanoscale electronic applications. The discovery opens the way to produce high performance electronic devices. The police in New Mexico have rescued 11 malnourished children kept in a filthy and heavily armed remote desert compound. Three mothers found living with them were arrested and charged along with two men described as armed Muslim extremists. Six US senators have written to Google CEO Sundar Pichai asking about the tech giant's reported plan to create a censored Chinese version of its search engine. According to reports, Google is also developing a news aggregating app that will comply with the country's censorship laws. Five persons have been killed after a small aircraft crashed near a shopping center in Santa Ana City in the US state of California. The Federal Aviation Administration has launched an investigation and said that the National Transportation Safety Board will determine the cause. Actress Charlotte Ray, popular for her character Mrs. Garrett on the long-running sitcom The Facts of Life, has died at the age of 92. The Different Strokes actress was diagnosed with bone cancer in 2017, seven years after pancreatic cancer diagnosis. I'll be back still logged on to IndianTimesDaily.com as the news from Punjab follows. Welcome back to Indian Times Daily. The top 10 headlines from Punjab are The Inter Services Intelligence of Pakistan in a clandestine operation codenamed Express is funding and promoting Sikh Referendum 2020 campaign. Indian security agencies have intercepted digital chatter to make this conclusive claim. Garshankar MLA J. Krishan Singh Rodi has announced that he is joining the rebel group of Aam Aadmi Party legislators led by Sukhpal Singh Khera. Rodi also accused the central leadership of ignoring the voice of the state unit. Noted economist and writer Sardar Singh Jol has alleged that Akalis have ruined the institution of Akal Takht by making Jatedar and Panch Pyaras as employees of the SGPC. Jol claimed that it is a clear degradation of the sixth supreme institution. The wild growth of cannabis along Link Road leading to Gurdaspur has become a worrying issue for rehabilitation centres. The anti-drug drive launched by local administration and police will be a futile exercise if the wild growing cannabis are not destroyed. The tedious system of claiming refund against GST paid on Langar purchases has not found favour with the SGPC and Durgana Mandar committee. Office holders from both committees have demanded that refund norms must be made easy for Langars. Former Cabinet Minister Daljeet Singh Chima has announced that the party will resume the poll coal rallies across the state. The rallies will highlight the misgovernance of the Congress government in the state. The city will also hold a political conference. A Pakistani boat has been seized from the banks of River Satluj along the Indo-Pak border. Following the seizure, the police have rounded up some people who had seen the boat and were allegedly using it since few days. Villagers in Tan Taran district have opened doors to accommodate teachers posted recently in schools in a far-flung areas. The local population and social organizations are offering transport to teachers. Several teachers had been facing problems after being posted at the border district. Two teenagers were crushed to death under a train while they were reportedly posing for a selfie on a railway track at Doraha. The victims had gone to pay obeisance at Gurdwara Katan Sahib. The incident took place when they were on their way back home. Former swashbuckling Indian one-day opener Virendra Sehwag has yet again taken to Twitter. This time, to hit out at a blooper in a school textbook. The tweet has sent the social media in a tizzy with Twitteri seeking explanation from the textbook authority. This is the end of the news bulletin, but stay tuned to IndianTimesDaily.com as news from Bollywood is coming up next. And do visit the resources section on this portal to find the best Indo-American businesses and resources from accounting firms to wedding planners in your city. All of us at Indian Times Daily wish that you have a great day. Salman Khan star of Bharat has become a topic of discussion the day director Ali Abbas Zafar announced Priyanka Chopra's exit from Bharat. After that, reports were doing the rounds that Salman Khan is mighty upset with Priyanka walking out of the film at the last minute. Then, a few days later, Salman announced that Katrina Kaif has now joined the star cast of Bharat. Now, rumour mills were on rise with stories of Salman ignoring Priyanka's mom Madhu Chopra at Manish Malhotra's Fashion Week, which happened a few days back. At the end of the show, when a reporter got chance to ask Madhu Chopra about the rumoured tiff between Priyanka and Salman, Madhu Chopra said, uh, I 
Also, when Madhu was asked to react on Priyanka and Nick's rumored marriage, she denied to answer that question. Well, Bharat is scheduled for an Eid release next year, which will also see Disha Patni, Nora Fatehi, and Sunil Grover in pivotal roles. Kajol will very soon be seen in Helicopter Ela, a film about an obsessive mother who continuously keeps a tab on her son's activities. Kajol interacted with the media at the trailer launch of Helicopter Ela along with her co-actors Riddhi Sen, Neha Dupia, director Pradeep Sarkar and producers Ajay Devgan and Jayanti Lal Gara on Sunday. At the trailer launch, Kajol opened how her husband actor Ajay Devgan supported in parenting their kids Nisa and Yug. She mentions during Helicopter Ela in fact that was one of the absolutely most amazing things about my husband i can say is that the days that uh, i was shooting or that i was out of town he made sure that he was in town and uh, you know he was uh, taking care of the kids and putting them to bed uh, my kid at least and putting her, him to bed and um, i think uh, that's that's all about what today's parenting is about helicopter ila revolves around kajol as a single mother to a son and someone who aspires to fulfill her dream of completing education and pursuing music Written by Mitesh Shah, the movie is co-produced by Ajay Devgan and Jayanti Lal Gara of Pen India Limited. Helicopter Ela is slated to release on September 7th.